Hi students, I'll try in this educational video to technologically introduce the moment connections as simply and as clearly as possible. Okay, let's go. First, I'll introduce the concept of bending moment and shear force transfer. So let's consider the steel frame erected on the ground. This steel frame is composed by secondary beams, primary beams, columns and foundations as it is depicted by the appropriate colors. If we consider a loading applied on this steel frame, we notice that internal forces will be created in the cross sections of the different steel members that constitute the steel frame in order to maintain equilibrium. These internal forces are bending moment and shear force. These internal forces will be transferred from the secondary beams to the primary beams and from the primary beams to the columns and from the columns to the foundations. In order to ensure the transfer of both bending moment and shear force, moment connections should be placed between secondary beams and primary beams and also between primary beams and columns and we have also to place fixed base plate as moment connection between columns and foundations. If we consider the bending moment and the shear force transfer between secondary beams and primary beams, in this case, the secondary beam is characterized as child member, which means that it is the steel member from which the bending moment and the shear force should be transferred while the primary beam is characterized as parent member, which means that the primary beam here is the steel member to which the bending moment and the shear force should be transferred. If we examine the bending moment and shear force transfer between primary beam and column, in this case, the primary beam becomes child member, while the columns are the parent member. Now let's focus on the concept of bending moment transfer. So let's consider the 2D basic frame constituting the considered 3D steel frame. Of course here the beam is depicted in red while the columns are depicted in black. The beam is loaded so it will be bent and if we examine the cross section of the bent beam we will find normal forces applied perpendicularly to the cross section and we have compression on the side of the applied load and tension on the opposite side of the applied load and compression and tension will be amplified as we approach the flanges. These compression and tension forces will create the bending moment. So based on this observation we can deduce that the bending moment is transferred from a child member to a parent member principally through the flanges. Now let's focus on the concept of shear force transfer. So in the same way as for the bending moment, if we examine the uh, cross section of the bent beam, we will find the shear force which is parallel to the direction of the applied load, so it's parallel to the cross section, and the higher shear force magnitudes are located in the web. Same thing for the higher shear stress magnitudes. So, based on this observation, we can deduce that the shear force is transferred from a child member to a parent member, principally through the web. This permits to finally conclude that since the moment connection is intended to transfer both bending moment and shear force, and since the bending moment is transferred principally through the flanges while the shear force is transferred principally through the web, so the moment connection uh, should be applied on both flanges and web of the child member. Now I'll introduce the first type of moment connection which can be called bolted flange, bolted web plates. As you can see in this figure, we have a beam depicted in brown as child member, and we have a column depicted in light blue as parent member. The beam is connected to the column by its flanges and its web, using flange and web plates. These flange and web plates are bolted 
to the flanges and the web of the beam and welded to the flange of the column. We can examine also a 2D technical drawing of a bolted flange bolted web plate moment connection. It's to note here that this 2D technical drawing is not directly generated from the 3D prototype that you see in this slide. It's just for information. You can notice that we have stiffeners welded to the web of the column at the location of the beam flanges. These stiffeners permit to reduce the stress concentration in the beam column connection. In fact, they permit to reduce the distortion of the flange of the column where the beam applies the tensile and they permit also to reduce the web yielding and crippling where the beam applies the compression. We can examine also a real picture of a bolted flange bolted web plates moment connection. You can uh, distinguish in this real picture how the flange and web plates are bolted to the flanges and the web of the beam which is the child member in this case and how they are welded to the flange of the column which is the parent member. It's to note also that the bolted flange bolted web plates moment connection can be carried out between a secondary beam as child member and the primary beam as parent member as it is depicted by the figure that you see in the bottom right of this slide. You can notice that uh, the connection between uh, the primary beam and the secondary beam is carried out almost in the same way as for the column beam connection. Now I'll introduce the second type of moment connections that can be called bolted flange, bolted web, angle plate. Here angle plate means that the connecting element can be a mixture between angles and plates. So, as it is depicted by the figure that you see in the slide, we have a beam as child member connected to a column as parent member using angles bolted to the flanges of the beam and welded to the web of the beam. These angles are also bolted to the flange of the column. It's to note here that the angle can be also bolted to the web of the beam instead to be welded. If we examine this 2D technical drawing, we can notice how the angle can be bolted to the web of the beam instead of to be welded and how the beam can be connected to the web of the column instead of the flange. Now the figure that you see in the bottom of this slide shows how we can use a mixture between angles and plates in order to carry out the connection between beam and column. You can notice that the flanges of the beam are connected to the flange of the column using plates instead of angles. These plates are bolted to the flange of the beam and welded to the flange of the column. And here the web of the beam is connected to the flange of the column using an angle welded to the web of the beam and bolted to the flange of the column. It's to note also that this type of moment connection can be carried out between a primary beam as child member and a secondary beam as parent member almost in the same way as for the beam column connection as it is depicted by the figure that you see in the bottom right of this slide. Now I'll introduce the third type of moment connections that can be called bolted extended end plate. So as it is depicted by the figure that you see in this slide, we have a beam depicted in light blue as child member connected to a column depicted in brown as parent member using a connecting element called end plate and depicted in dark blue in this figure. This end plate is welded to the flanges and the web of the beam and bolted to the flange of the column. Further information about the bolted extended end plate can be gathered when examining the technical drawing that you see in the bottom of this slide. This bolted extended end plate can be stiffened using stiffeners for the reasons that I explained previously in this educational video. Various types of stiffeners can be used. We have the end stiffener, the Morris stiffener, the K stiffener and the web doubler as it is depicted 
by the figure that you see in the right of this slide. It's to note also that for the bolted extended end plate, the number of bolts can be 4 or 8 on the two sides. In the presented example, we have 4 bolts on the two sides. It's important to mention here that the bolted extended end plate are pre-qualified moment connections specified in the American Institute of Steel Construction Standards. We have the bolted extended end plate DG4 and the bolted extended end plate DG16. DG4 to say design guide 4 and DG16 to say design guide 16. DG4 is similar to DG16 except that there are some few standard differences principally in terms of plate thickness, seismic references and experimental conditions. Now I'll introduce another type of moment connections which is the directly welded moment connection as it is depicted by the figure that you see in this slide. So we have a beam as child member connected to a column as parent member using a direct welding of its flanges and its web to the flange of the column. It's to note that uh, the stiffeners can be used in the directly welded moment connection. Now I'll introduce a specific type of moment connections called Eve Honch. So as it is shown by the figure that you see now, we have a rafter which is an inclined beam depicted here in dark brown and a haunch as reinforcement welded to the bottom flange of the rafter and depicted here in light brown. You can notice that the end section of the rafter is augmented by the end section of the haunch and the global end section rafter haunch is connected to the flange of the column using an end plate as connecting element. The end section of the rafter and the haunch is welded to the end plate and the end plate is bolted to the flange of the column. Stiffeners can be used and uh, they are located at the flanges of the rafter and the haunch or at the top flange of the rafter and the bottom flange of the haunch. It's to note also that the eave haunch can be directly welded to the flange of the column as it is depicted by the figure that you see in the right of this slide. It's important to mention here that the eave haunch permits to reduce the moment at the connection since the end section of the rafter is augmented by that of the haunch. Also, for reasons of correct weld sizing of the weld bead between the rafter and the end plate, the haunch will give the possibility of increasing the weld length when it is not possible to increase the weld throat. This is the importance of Eve Haunch. This Eve Haunch technological solution is also carried out between rafters and in this case the moment connection is called Apex Haunch as it is depicted by the figure that you see in this slide. Now I'll introduce the moment connection between the column and the foundation and it's called in this case fixed base plate connection as it is depicted by the figure that you see now. So you can notice a column depicted here in yellow. This column is connected to the foundation using an end plate as connecting element. The end plate here is depicted in blue. You can notice also that the column is welded by its flanges and its web to the end plate and the end plate is bolted to the foundation. Please notice that the bolts are placed in the neighborhood of the flanges, not the web. So in this case, the rotation will be not allowed and this fixed base plate connection will be able to carry the bending moment. Well, I presented in this educational video the principal moment connections that can be found in the steel constructions, but uh, there are other types of moment connections such as the splice moment connection depicted by the figures, the technical drawing and the picture that you see now in this slide. This educational video takes end. Please, if you have any questions, remarks, or suggestions, please mention it in the comments. Thanks a lot for your attention.